Hello! Before we start this spooky video, I teamed up with Crowdmade to make some wonderful merch. We got a t-shirt to show how much better you are than everybody else. We got a polo shirt to impress grandma with. We got a raccoon tour Halloween shirt just in time for the season. We even have an awesome embroidered hat that I haven't stopped wearing since I received it. We got more designs on the way. Link is in the description. Anyway, I just want to get that off my chest. And I did that all in one take. Wow, I'm really proud of myself. Now, without further ado... Hey, just a quick disclaimer, I spent a lot of time, attention, and effort mixing the sound on this video. I would really prefer if you wore some of the best available headphones that you have while watching this. I promise you, there are absolutely no jump scares, there's just sound effects and atmosphere that are not designed to startle you. Also, please keep in mind that this video is going to delve a bit into speculation of the afterlife, the paranormal, that sort of thing. If you aren't comfortable hearing opinions about that, please click off instead of whining in my comment section. Thank you so much. Two thousand eighteen was my first year experiencing Halloween as a bona fide one hundred percent adult. I couldn't trick or treat. I couldn't depend on my parents to plan some fun activity, and most of my friends were out working. It was just me and my girlfriend to fend for ourselves. After digging around our local events, we discovered a local restaurant was doing a late night scary story thing with some local authors. We thought it'd be cool to get some dinner and be spooked by some cool Boise, Idaho writer bro guy dudes. We pulled up, we got our food, and we started listening. The first author had written a story about like the world's first vampire living as a caveman man going through the centuries as an immortal monster experiencing human history. I didn't really like it, to be honest. The second and final author, his name was Mr. Brunswick. He was essentially more of a psychic who wrote about his family's twisted history. His grandfather was one of those Lovecraft-esque detectives who got wound up in a couple of supernatural cases. He kept extensive notes and they were never published. Mr. Brunswick discovered his grandfather's notes and he described his own experiences with them. He was a really fascinating man. He told us about how our hometown Town, the city of Boise has a long pattern of people dying in unpleasant and forgotten ways in history. From the Basque immigrants with their herds of sheep to Chinese workers being forced to tunnel underground and build their own communities, the streets were full of spirits just existing and waiting for something to happen. Now, if you've seen any of my past videos, you'll know that I'm not a big believer in God or spirits or the supernatural, but Mr. Brunswick had this really persuasive and impressive confidence about him. He knew what he was talking about. Mr. Mr. Brunswick cleared his throat into the microphone. <clears throat> I'd like to take one volunteer from the audience who would like to feel the veil between the living and the dead. Oh, dude, I'm all over this. I was one of the only people in the crowd to raise my hand. He pulled me up next to his podium. He turned to me and he gave me a small piece of paper. Put this in between your fingers and keep it there. Don't let go until I remove it. This is incredibly important. This is what binds you to our world. He had a sense of dread and stress in the way that he spoke privately to me. There was no microphone in front of him. If he was some magician, he would have just told me to play along. He felt genuinely stoic and intense in the moment. While it wasn't logical, I started to feel a little bit worried. He got back up to his podium and he began giving me instructions for everyone to hear. Sir, I'd like you to close your eyes and imagine you're in a small room. I'm there. I see it clear as day. This was unlike anything I've ever experienced. It didn't feel like my imagination. This was as real as it could be. I want you to describe the room you're in for me. It's dark and dusty. Victorian era, there's peeling red wallpaper exposing a raw wood foundation. The floorboards are made of driftwood, there is a small red chair in one corner, and it's covered in dust. There are no light fixtures anywhere. What's the one strange thing about the room? There are no windows, and there's only one door. That door leads to death. I want you to open it. I step forward, and I grab the metal handle, and I twist it. The door opened silently. There was nothing inside. It was this black and endless void that just stretched forever. What do you see? I don't see anything. It's just darkness. Mr. Brunswick took the slip of paper from my hands. My heart stopped. I looked back at the door. It just began eroding away. 
no sound, no particle effect. It just began disappearing from the top down. I started to panic. The darkness got bigger and more oppressive. It wasn't nothingness, it was tight and claustrophobic. There were millions of tiny things swimming through it and they were brushing against my skin and body, desperate to cling on and take me. I felt like I had tried to breathe in water and I was choking on everything in there. And through all the chaos and panic, something blew on my face. It wrapped around my head and passed through my hair. All the chaos stopped. Everything was still. Open your eyes. I dialed back into the room. I had completely forgotten there were dozens of people watching me. Did you feel deaf? I collected myself and looked around, planting myself back where I was standing. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Let's give my brave volunteer a hand, everybody. I waddled back to my seat and sat next to my girlfriend. She leaned over to me and was like, Did anything happen? I guess. After his speech, everybody began packing up and leaving. I went to go speak with Mr. Brunswick. He had a much cheerier demeanor. Hey, thank you for volunteering for me. I did this last year and nobody raised their hands. It was a little embarrassing, but thank you for being a good sport and playing along. I wasn't playing along. That was really trippy. Did you have an actual experience in there? He almost sounded shocked. I think I did. Yeah, it was horrifying. Where can I learn more about this kind of thing? With your grandfather and his notebooks and the secret underground cults and the afterlife stuff and spirits and... What was that ritual you did on me? He looked pretty uncomfortable. Can you keep a secret? He looked me dead in the eye and he poured his heart out. I didn't do any ritual or anything tonight. My grandfather was never a detective. There are no notebooks. My name isn't even Mr. Brunswick. I made everything up. I'm a fiction writer. It says so on the front pages of all of my books. This was just a work of my imagination and then I shared it with your imagination. There are no such thing as psychics. They're all con artists. There's no such thing as spirits or gods or probably even an afterlife. What you experienced here was completely from you, same as every other person who's had a paranormal experience, just projecting their own expectations on a situation. Chances are, everything can be chalked down to an overactive imagination and something out of the ordinary happening. Did you have a bad experience while I was talking with you? I, uh, yeah, it was claustrophobic and dark and I panicked and there were millions of souls screaming to get back out. Do you have a negative view of what happens after we die? Uh, yeah, a, a little bit. Here's the big question for you then, and not one that gets asked often enough. What does it matter? Death is gonna come for you whether you like it or not. The nature of it is set in stone. Maybe it is nothing. Maybe it is Jesus or Allah judging you. Maybe some tribe in Africa were right all along and it's some sun god or something and the whole world is screwed. Whatever it is, you can't make a difference and spending time worrying about that is completely out of your control and it's pretty stupid and a complete waste of your humanity. In a few billion years, the earth is gonna be swallowed up by the sun. All of your remains, this restaurant, everything will be blasted by some cosmic energy energies and swept away into oblivion for all of eternity. You can't change that. Nobody can. So why bother? The only thing that is guaranteed to us is this, our perception of everything. You think, therefore you are, and that's the only thing that you're absolutely sure of. Technically, that's the only thing that matters in your universe. That's the only thing that you're ever going to have. So why ruin that? Because if you throw your own perception of the world, your consciousness, and make it miserable, you will have nothing forever. So for the love of God, have a happy Halloween. Because your life literally depends on it.